where does one start on describing the events that have taken place over the past few weeks on social media and the internet as a, as a whole when it comes to gaming? And we have just recently saw a lot of people lose their minds dramatically and just say outlandish, crazy stuff all over. And as a result of all this, I decided to just sit back, hold my tongue, collect my thoughts, and for the past two and a half weeks, try to figure out f and how to formulate what I am going to exactly say about this situation. And in doing so, this is where I hope you guys stick with this video because I am also going to reveal some things about myself in the process to kind of help compound the way I'm feeling about this situation. And it's not to get anybody to, shall I say, feel sorry for me or to make this platform something that it's not because this platform is supposed to be a place for people to come enjoy gaming maybe poke a little bit of fun at the console war every once in a while but at the end of the day gaming has helped me get through some pretty tough turbulent and dark times so everybody let's just lead off with i am centurion 1307 but my name is phil i started doing youtube back in 2019 and I was really actually very excited to be able to discuss gaming and the joy that I find in the games I play and maybe make some friends doing it. Because let's face it, if you're like me, the people you work around, they're not a lot of fun and they don't play games. And so you have no way of discussing anything you're passionate about when it comes to my, at least my favorite hobby, playing video games. When it comes to what has taken place on social media, there is three points here. And the first one, we're going to start with what the gaming media did and why I am officially fed up with the gaming media. And I could see why a lot of people are very contentious and fed up as well. And that is because the gaming media at this point has the same problem as a vast majority of media journalism in the world. And that is the lack of accountability and the what Denzel Washington likes to refer to as the race to be first. Denzel Washington was quoted in saying to a group of journalists interviewing him, if you don't read the news, you're not informed. If you do read the news, you are misinformed. And he explained to the journalists that were interviewing them that they have a very important role to not only accurately and professionally represent the information that they are trying to deliver but they need to not get caught up in the real world the real world debacle of what media has become and that is the idea of being able to print it first on your website your newspaper your blog what have you the race to be first takes place over accuracy and professionalism and we completely saw this before Microsoft came out and gave their business update last week. And now here we are with numerous gaming journalists websites and gaming journalists in general that we will not name here, all walking around with egg on their face. And they're still trying to figure out why people are pissed off at them when honestly, was it worth it to be first? So when it comes to accountability and why I feel like I have a good experience in accountability is what I'm about to say, I don't need you to feel sorry for me. I'm pretty sure that there's going to be some people that are going to run on the internet the minute they hear this and just let the rumors take off. It's going to be absolute fun because this is where I'm wanting to show how rumors and leaks are damaging, if not downright dangerous especially in situations that i have personally witnessed and been part of but getting back to accountability i learned a lot about accountability and i don't need you to feel sorry for me again um everything i'm about to say was under my own fruition through my own mistakes and i learned about how to own up to my own mistakes by sitting behind a five inch thick steel door in an orange jumpsuit locked up let that sink in for a little bit i'm not going to tell you what i did which is going to be fun for the rumor mill but in that environment i saw people completely destroyed 
by rumors. People would just be so quick to assume that they knew the person you were just because of a mistake you made or for other reasons. Um, and that boiled all the way down into the courtroom of the of the criminal justice system here in the United States, where I saw people just pr- pretty much railroaded uh, over the idea of a rumor and things that had no weight or bearing. It was all just hearsay, which is why I never once fed into everything that was being said on the Internet, which is why I wanted to be reserved in my thoughts and my my train of thought when it came to exactly what xbox has been trying to do this whole time and that's why i have to laugh there's a lot of people that really feel that xbox fooled them when i don't really feel fooled at all because i didn't really interpret their words for being some kind of virtue signaling that they were going to somehow you know look out for me um, it, little old me, and they were going to, my dreams and desires for the Xbox brand, when honestly, all my dreams and desires were from the beginning were just to play some video games and hang out with friends. And I, I could just give a flying rat's ass if somebody else on another platform can play that game. Because heaven forbid, if I could sit down and have a great constructive conversation with them on what they liked or disliked about the game that I enjoyed playing. Speaking of people playing games that I enjoyed playing, that brings me to the PlayStation hypocrites. And I'm not grouping everybody who plays PlayStation into that. We're talking like the top 1% of all the 1% of crazies. According to these individuals, Xbox is trash. Xbox has had no games. Xbox has nothing that they ever want to play. Xbox just needs to essentially burn in hell. And now all of a sudden when they hear these little myths and rumors and leaks that they could play an Xbox game on their PlayStation, oh my God, like all of a sudden Xbox has games. Oh, and and also I like all of a sudden, I remember when uh, the Indiana Jones trailer came out, they said they were getting motion sick. Now all of a sudden people have cured their motion sickness and they're ready for Indiana Jones to be on the PlayStation Uh, We saw numerous people get up in arms over, please let it come to PlayStation. Well, we all saw through the business update that Microsoft is not going to be bringing a whole library of games to PlayStation. They're going to be bringing four games, two service games, more than likely Sea of Thieves and Grounded and Hi-Fi Russian Petiment. Um, And... That's where I have to laugh at the whole situation. Everybody was getting ready to start playing Halo, Gears of War, Starfield, Indiana Jones, what have you, on the PlayStation. And I do feel that at the end of the day, when it comes to exclusive games, if you want to feel that they create a brand identity for you, that's very petty. Because at the end of the day, if you really look at the data and the the analytics... Um, exclusives don't really drive the needle when it comes to like just how much presence that they give a platform. Yes, you do have essentially your one-off uh, tentpole franchises like Halo and God of War, which we all know what brands they respectively belong to. But at the end of the day, what really makes an ecosystem is... A party system that allows you to connect with your friends on both PC and Xbox. Um, A system of customer service of being able to buy a game and decide to change your mind without playing it and return it within a few days. Um, If your console's hacked, it's a lot easier to deal with on the Xbox side. There is things we can go on about all day long that make xbox a much stronger brand exclusively and it doesn't even have to bring a video game into the damn equation we can talk about systems and customer service and other features of the brand outside of games that really make xbox stand out for me now speaking of the xbox brand and how it stands out for me let's get to xbox influencers I am completely shocked that they feel that it is okay to act like this. 
in my opinion, when you're an influencer, especially a branded one where the actual brand it backs you and puts you in the spotlight and essentially fuels your stardom on social media or wherever your face ends up, you're essentially, almost, I don't want to say you're an employee, but you at least got to conduct yourself professionally and honorably. And that's where you got to at least, if you have any criticism, be professional about it. Don't harass the executives on social media. Don't lie through your teeth in a game review just for you to change your tune in a podcast. I really do feel that you are doing a serious disservice to the concept of an influencer. And this is where it concerns me because you're going to now cause Xbox which is one of the more community-driven brands in gaming. They're very communicative with their executives in the social media space, and you, some of their executives actually have very tight friendships with uh, influencers in gaming. And I'm worried that with everything that has taken place over the next few weeks, that if it continues to be like this, will we see Xbox essentially pull back and become just this stoic, silent giant like PlayStation and other platforms where there's like little to no community interaction between the executives and the brand. You can see where I'm going with all this. I'm not going to sit here and harp on this crap all day long. But now that it's out in the wild about who I am, what I am, and what gaming represents to me because again i said it i'm going to say it again gaming has helped me through some dark times i am literally and i don't make this up a survivor of very violent child abuse i have a very interesting story i could tell you growing up but that's not what this platform is about but that is where gaming has really helped me through some hard times and for those few hours, those short few hours of where I'm able to play a game and escape and be part of a completely different world and get narrative stories, experiences, what have you. And now with the way gaming has gotten very connected with people over the Internet, I have been able to meet some really great individuals all across the world. I remember some of the first Xbox 360 games I played like Halo 3 online where I was able to meet an individual named Blue Dragon from New Zealand and Thor's Carnage, who is a United States Marine stationed in Hawaii. Those are some very fond memories of mine that, again, really helped make up some very different times for me. And that is where I hope you guys now see that the, the, the direction for this channel is going to be totally different because I want to be able to be totally open and upfront with you about just how I feel uh, about what's going on. And hey, it's going to be an absolute fun experience. So please stay tuned for this channel. I look forward to you seeing my channel grow, me grow. The future is definitely very bright for this channel. I'm going to continue playing on my Xbox as long as there's an Xbox library for me to play games from. And what have you and it's going to be an absolute great time so please if you're one of those individuals that has been completely jaded by what has taken place over the past few weeks on social media i hope you find that it is still okay to come here and find somebody that can give criticism when necessary but not take it very far and just really just have a downright awesome conversation when it comes to the joys of gaming rather than getting wrapped up in all the dramatic BS. So again, I am Centurion1307. I thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you soon.